Hey everybody, it's your girl Mimi of Mimi's Mocha Treats. And today I will show you how I created this egg-shaped cake inspired by surrealist artist Avery Palmer. Now, let me go on and run over to the Google and provide a correct definition of surrealism art. Surrealism is an art and cultural movement that developed in Europe in the aftermath of World War I, in which artists aim to allow the unconscious mind to express itself often resulting in the depiction of illogical or dreamlike scenes and ideas. Its intention was, according to leader Andre Breton, to resolve the previously contradictory conditions of dream and reality into an absolute reality, a super reality. Or surreality, surreality, surreality. That's how, yeah, surreality. <laughs> All right. So it produced works of painting, writing, theater, filmmaking, photography, and other media as well. Okay, so I am most intrigued by things that aren't what most folks would call, you know, realistic or normal. And yep, I did do air quotes when I said the word normal. And I love creating cakes that depict strange things. So when I came across this piece called None Too Soon for a Balloon by Mr. Palmer, I immediately jumped into the cake space and got to work. And I thought it would be quite fitting for this week, being that the commercial side of the Easter holiday focuses a lot on eggs and decorating them. Okay, so let's get back to this cake. Now the sculpting of it was quite easy and didn't take that much time at all. But when it got time to creating the eyeball, I wanted to get as close as possible to creating a realistic eye. So I'm kind of obsessed with the human anatomy. <laughs> yep, I am. And as I am learning more and more about sculpting and the forms of our bodies, I have actually found myself staring more and more at people that I encounter. Now, this is a turn in my life because I swear I have always hated seeing people stare at me. I typically <laughs> would return the look with a deathly glare. Yes, please don't judge me and then look away. But now I'm the stare. And as I'm analyzing a person's facial features and structure, I get more and more intrigued by their faces. Now, anywho, what I have found to be a great resource as I am learning anatomy is a series of books by Anatomy for Sculptures, which to me, a novice, are like the Bible for artists. You couldn't see it in the frames, but I definitely had my book open to the section on eyes and I probably spent like 30 minutes creating this eyeball. Though I have lots to learn, I am definitely enjoying the process along the way. For those of you new to painting on modeling chocolate and fondant, I have a little tip to share. When using gel colors to slow down the drying process and thin out the paint, it is best to add a little extract or Everclear to the paint. Now Everclear will dry out much faster and only allows you a little bit of time to blend or layer the colors, but extract is perfect to achieve your coloring goals. And when it comes to brushes, you know, I have mixed feelings about which ones to buy. Now I have a huge stash of acrylic makeup and nail brushes, and I usually buy the academic acrylic brushes whenever I have a Michaels coupon handy. Yep, yep, I, I am thrifty, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but I would love to hear from all of you what type of brushes you use in your experience with working with them. When it was time to add color to the skin, I started with ivory gel paint mixed with a little bit of magenta and white. I thinned it down as much as possible to add the pink undertones to the piece. Once I was happy with that, I started going in with washes of green, blue, yellow, and brown to get the skin tone I was hoping for. You know, I did make some changes from the original art piece in that my eye was blue instead of brown, and my skin tone was more African or African American, whichever description you prefer, than Caucasian. All right, it's time to add some shading to this piece. So when it came to the shading, I leaned heavily on the greens, blues, and browns and made sure to add them in the corner of, you know, where your eyebrow, what is that, that portion where your eyelid hits like your, 
your forehead or underneath your eyebrow. Listen, I don't have my anatomy book in front of me, so please don't come for me <laughs> because I am not providing you with the correct and scientific um, words to describe what I'm trying to say. But again, I just went into the corners and made sure to add a little bit more definition so that you can also see, you know, some dimension to the piece. To create a skin texture, I use a wire feather pottery sculpting tool. I think that's the correct terminology for it. And I'm kind of certain I should have placed a piece of saran wrap between the tool and the modeling chocolate, but I will try that on my next piece to see if I notice a difference in the overall effect. Now looking from this angle, that eye really does look creepy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so here now I'm wrapping the cake with the fondant and I did roll the fondant kind of thick this time because um, I wanted to be able to cut into the fondant and have it maintain its shape without flopping over. Now this isn't my normal way of covering cakes and fondant. I like to roll my fondant very, very thin. Um, but for this purpose alone, I did make it thicker than normal. Okay, now it's time to get to cracking. You like that, right? You like how I did that? Okay, anyway, so I took my um, my knife and I went through and just cut some cracks into the fondant. Um, I wasn't, you know, like being precise. I just went with whatever the mood made me do. Um, some places I dug in a little bit deeper. Um, and then on other areas, as you got closer to the edge, what I did was as I sort of cut into the fondant to try to give, you know how like when you crack an egg, it cracks, but there's sometimes there's an indentation in the shell when you're trying to crack the egg. Does that make sense? Okay, well, I hope it does. But yes, that was the effect that I was trying to create. Okay, so now it was time to add this little arm that was gonna hold this red balloon. And I really didn't think this part out thoroughly because um, when I sculpted the modeling chocolate arm, you know, it has a little bit of weight to it. But what I did was, is I took some 20 gauge floral wire, folded it in half, and then I pushed it inside, pushed it in it, my goodness, I pushed it inside the arm and then into the cake. Now being that the cake was out for a while, it had softened up. So I had to take it out, put another piece of wire in there, stick it in, and then add additional pieces of fondant underneath the armpit that's connected to the egg. You can't see it, but trust me, it's there. All right, now I'm going in after adding additional shading and I've taken my white paint and I have mixed it in with some uh, mango extract. And then in the cracks, I'm taking my fine liner brush and I'm adding a little bit more dimension inside the cracks. And then I'm taking that same brush that I use to sort of like fade out the color on the face to add color around the cracks, just to add a little bit more dimension. Um, I didn't have to add that much more paint to the brush because there was a lot on there and it allowed me to just pat and put places, you know, put the color in certain places just to give it a little razzle dazzle, as I like to say. Okay guys, we've reached the end and the last bit that I have to do is to color this red balloon. And you don't see it, but off camera, I did add eyebrows and you'll see it in the final photo. Now I really enjoyed creating this cake and let me tell you, I'm about to scour the internet for more art pieces that intrigue me or inspire me. So tell me how you feel about this cake. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you like it? Do you hate it? You know, would you like to recreate this cake? And as usual, I wanna thank you all for looking and I hope you all have an amazingly sweet day.